Hi everybody, Gary Fong here. I am uh, broadcasting in from Kelowna, British Columbia. It is June 1, 2020. And as of today, Kelowna has decided to become a 5G pilot program for um, the downtown core, the very important tourist hub of Kelowna and is activating a 5G pilot program. Now to quote, uh, the mayor in the city's press release, he said, Mayor Colin Bazarin, he said, this is an exciting opportunity for Kelowna to build on the work we're doing to bring smart city technologies to our city. Now, let me contrast that with what Céline Fremont, uh, the minister of the government of Brussels, uh, who's responsible for housing, quality of life, environment, and energy said. She said, I cannot welcome such technology if the radiation standards which must protect the citizen are not respected 5g or not the people of brussels are not guinea pigs whose health i can sell at a profit we cannot leave anything to doubt so that's the contrast between two recent uh, city officials about 5g we have our Kelowna mayor excited about this technology and we have brussels saying that we cannot sell our residents' health at a profit. Now, Mill Valley, California enacted an emergency ordinance banning 5G cell towers, citing the International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, findings on cancer risk. Now, let me tell you about what the IARC said. In 2011, the IARC, which is part of the World Health Organization, classified RF electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans based on an increased risk for glioma, a malignant type of brain cancer. Um, so that is just an indication of there might be a risk. Now, I'm not here to say that there is a risk. I'm saying that there are Mill Valley, California, there's a number of cities and they're growing that are pushing back on 5G use because the risks are not yet known. So let me read you a letter that I wrote to our mayor. Um, I did contact his office for an interview for this channel because I wanted to ask him what was behind the idea of uh, participating in this pilot program when even our neighboring city of Penticton, BC is now having a hearing on the health risks of 5G and yet without any consent of our, my knowledge, no, it, we're completely blindsided. There was never up to a vote. It was just announced in a very cheerful uh, press release um, on Friday that uh, woohoo, Kelowna is going to be part of a 5G pilot program. Um, and it was on the front page of the local news uh, outlets, and there were hundreds of angry comments after that, at which page both of those news uh, venues relegated the article to back page status. And it's, uh, it, it's something that um, is quite concerning. So let me read you my letter uh, to the mayor. Mayor Bazran, I am informed and therefore believe that you are relying on Infrastructure Canada's Safety Code 6, Health Canada's RF exposure guidelines, in allowing your launch of a 5G pilot program in the important downtown core next week. I urge you to consider delaying this until you consider the information contained in this letter. Number one, according to its own document, Safety Code 6, quote, reflects the scientific literature published up to August 2014 and replaces the previous version published in 2009. In 2014, that was well before 5G technology was available anywhere. Number two, according to the very same document, at frequencies above 10 megahertz, the first scientifically established effect to occur is heating of tissue. <clears throat> then it specifically states that exposure limits in safety code 6 for frequencies above 10 megahertz are therefore set below the level at which thermal effects could occur. Now, mind you, 5G is 5,000 megahertz. This is 50 times the level at which heating of tissue is known, scientifically known to occur. Microwave radiation at this level, at some level, literally cooks human tissue. Now, as an elected official, you have a 
fiduciary and moral duty to protect the residents who trust you, this is my letter to the mayor, to make the best decisions for one, public safety, number two, our all-important tourism industry, and number three, the reputation of Kelowna, British Columbia, worldwide. Of course, you are aware that 5G is a controversial and polarizing topic, but one cannot deny that the number of cities around the world that are banning 5G implementation is growing. Um, you now have directed Kelowna to buck the trend and embrace it. Um, additionally, any area where increased exposure to any possible risk of cancer should be noted with public signage to protect residents and tourists who may not consent. They cannot be allowed to walk into a hot zone without being informed. A single press release is not enough warning. Um, I note that all letters addressed to you become a matter of public record. Let it be known to the public that you were at least informed of the possible health risks of 5G. What you do with this information is now up to you. You are the one who expressed excitement at a project which will, and I quote, evaluate the management of resources and assets such as guard collection, parking spaces, and traffic systems. Now, I'll show you on the map here that downtown Kelowna, the area at, at which we're speaking of, which is Bernard Avenue, uh, incidentally, where my office used to be, uh, between Water Street and Pandozi, um, is literally, there are just a small number of restaurants here. There's a, there's a Lululemon. There is a, a couple of restaurants. Mind you that there have already been plans uh, uh, for that exact area to be closed off to vehicle traffic and it'll be a pedestrian only street which means that they're going to expand the patios and cars can't even uh, go through which is makes it nonsensical to say that we're going to launch this 5g pilot program to study the pedestrian habits and trash pickup habits of a portion of a street that is imminent to change into pedestrian walkway only. So a lot of the controversy has been said that we don't want surveillance information to um, monitor our habits and the pushback uh, from the official uh, press uh, people who are uh, responding to the controversy are saying that this is such low resolution that it, it, it won't even be able to identify your faces. Well, that being the case, why do we need the high-speed data uh, transfer of 5G? Um, you could just hire a bunch of UBC students who are part of this pilot program to literally sit there and say, huh, 10 people walked by and one person called a cab. Um, yeah, there were four bags of trash dropped into the 11 receptacles that run along this one uh, city block basically and um and mark that down and compile that data why do we need 5g um why does that make this a really good idea especially with this kind of controversy around the world there are many people who uh, it's a polarizing topic 5g is but there are a lot of people who are very wary of the dangers the health risks of 5g for Kelowna to be known that it's vibrant, well, actually, I want to say once vibrant downtown core, because if you walk up and down the street, you'll see a lot of closed restaurants, closed um, retail stores, little, uh, little stores. You'll find restaurants um, that have turned over a number of times, even in the last year or two. Um, not really a vibrant downtown core, but it is where the tourists flock to in Kelowna. Once word gets out that Kelowna is a 5G pilot city, do you think that will enhance our reputation as a tourism hotspot or possibly jeopardize it? That is a question that uh, now faces the mayor because with more letters that come to him that show that he was told of uh, the risk, the health risks, the risk to tourism industry or whatever, and at this moment chose to decide in a different way, this will become part of his legacy. This will become the referendum for his political career. And I'm not saying that 
you know, whatever's going to happen is what's going to happen. I'm saying that this is a very, very large choice. And basically, the public needs to be informed that if you're going to walk down Bernard Avenue between Pandozi and Water Street, you will be subjected to 5G radiation 5, 000, uh, 50 times of uh, the, the radiation standard of health Canada's own safety document, um, you'll be subjected to that amount of radiation and you'll be put under surveillance. And yet there is no signage. The only thing that's ever been put out has been one press release that got onto a couple of the news outlets. And that can't, that can't happen. That's just not proper. Um, again, in California, um, the 11th district, the federal district, is the one that basically stopped uh, public smoking. It is the one that uh, ruled for uh, secondhand smoke being an issue and required by law signage that any building that had a smoking area, there would be a cancer warning. This building contains materials known to cause cancer uh, because they, the building owner, didn't want people to walk in there, get secondhand smoke, get cancer, and then get sued. Um, now you have a situation where there's a mayor who knows that there is a possible risk, decides after how many letters we're going to send to ignore that, not put up signage. I mean, at least I'm saying put up signage. At least put out a uh, tourism advisory or a resident advisory. You are entering a 5G surveillance area. At least put that up. Then, you know... Uh, were you negligent? Were you, um, uh, you know, in, in doing so? Um, at least you'll have signage, but people should have informed consent when they want to go around and do the activities like enjoying a beautiful tourism area. So anyway, uh, here is the email address uh, for the mayor. Not trying to make his life more difficult. I'm trying to make the lives of people in Kelowna, the ones who elected him as our trusted official, uh, more important than, as the uh, health minister of Belgium says, more important than money. Thanks for watching.